In this Grasshopper tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a brick wall such as this one. So I'll preview off this algorithm that I have here. Actually, I'll disable it so it doesn't take up computer memory and make my computer slower. And I will create my own version. So for input, we'll take some curves. And so I'll draw these curves in Rhino because that would be much faster than modeling them in Grasshopper. It's about knowing which software for which task. So now that we have two construction curves, let's import them into Grasshopper. Right click, set one curve. We have our top curve and our bottom curve. And we're going to loft these together. So we'll plug them in and now we have a surface. Let's find the extents of this surface by using a bounding box. And we're doing this so we can create some lines to project onto the surface to create the rows of bricks. So we're going to deconstruct this box that we've just created and we'll take its edges. We don't know which edges we want yet, so we're going to scroll through them with a list item node. Um, and now we can see which edges we're selecting. Looks like we're going to want the fourth edge. And let's also take Seems that this number slider is not long enough. I think that there are 12 edges. Okay, let's also take the 12th edge. Great. So now that we have these two edges, let's actually preview this other stuff off and we can tween these curves to get an array of curves between them and we'll plug in our range of factors. But you'll notice that we're getting this weird distortion because we need to flip one of these curves so that the curves line up and create a clean array. So now we'll project these curves onto our loft in the y direction and now they exist on the surface. We can preview everything else off and we have curves that represent where our rows of bricks will be. Let's shatter these curves. But first, let's separate them into two lists using dispatch. We do this because every other row is going to look the same. And then all the other rows are going to look the same. So we're going to have two different brick patterns. So we'll dis dispatch this into two lists and we will shatter them. How are we going to find the parameters? Well, we're going to divide the curve into, for instance, 12 segments. And then we can plug those parameters that we've just generated into shatter and we've just split the curve in those places. And we can do the same thing for list B. And you'll notice we have an empty output because we have messed up our groupings. We're going to need to flatten this list and this list for the dispatch to work. And now we have our alternating lists of segments. And there's six curves here and six groups of parameters. So we're going to need to graph these curves, put each in their own group so each curve lines up with its own set of parameters. And now we have six groups of 
output, cur output curves, each containing 12 segments, because we have divided each curve into 12 segments. That's perfect. We're going to perform another dispatch on these two lists. And we'll only take opposite results from each of these dispatches. And you will see the result. Great. Now we have our brick pattern. Let's hide our initial rhino curve so we can see the full extents of it. Notice this issue on the bottom row. How can we fix that? Well, let's make sure to only divide these curves with odd numbers. So we'll change this to odd, and now it should work all the time. Odd numbers cause issues. Now, the only thing left to do is turn these curves into bricks. And that is actually quite simple. So all we have to do is extend these curves, type of extension, let's make it a line. And actually, these are curves right now, but bricks should be rectangular. So let's make these curves into uh, straight lines. And we can do that by finding the end points and connecting them with lines. And now in the place of our curved lines, we have straight lines. So by default, the type of extension is line, which means it's going to be a straight extension, which works fine. Let's move to a number slider from 0 to 1 with two decimal places. And now, as you can see, we can extend these curves in order to make the bricks longer. We'll call this brick length extension. Great. We'll preview all the previous stuff off. And now all we have to do is offset these curves on both sides. So we'll change one of these distances to the negative version by plugging in negative x. And we can put a number slider from 0 to 1 with two decimal places again. And if we plug that in, notice it didn't work. Let's flatten. The, oh, it's because number slider was at 0. There we go. Great. We've got our offsets. And we will find the endpoints of these curves. And if we connect them up, then we can create end caps to close these curves. Or actually, an easier seeming way is maybe we just loft them together. So let's make sure that each curve is in its own group. Great. And those groups correspond. And so we can throw each curve into corresponding groups. Now we have two curves per group and they'll get locked together. And now all we have to do is extrude these surfaces that we've created in the Z direction. And it looks about right, but we should make sure that it's right. We can do that by dividing the height of this wall by the number of layers. So we'll find the height by deconstructing this box right here. And if we plug in a number to its Z domain, then we find the range of that domain, which corresponds to its height. So let's drag this over. Um, so let's find the number of layers. I believe that that is here. The range for this tween curves is how many layers. By default, it's 10. But this is our number of layers. So if we're dividing 
the number, the total height by the number of layers, just like this, then we can get the height of each extrusion. We can plug that in here. And now they should all be extruded the perfect height. We have essentially completed this algorithm, but let's plug in a custom preview just to display it better. Um, we could preview all of this stuff off and let's create a better color. We can change this to rendered and voila, we've got our program. And now it is up to you to adjust it and make it look beautiful. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and like. Thanks.